In the late 19th century, there was a form of mass media, a visual one, that predated television by about 50 years. Any guesses as to what that medium was? Postcards. Postcards were a European media phenomenon. The photos let people see the world without leaving their home. And like many modern forms of media, they were visual, cheap, and relatively easy to distribute. But it was the era of colonialism, and postcards were also a means of asserting racial superiority. Photographers were sent with colonizers to take pictures of what they saw, sometimes of what they wanted to see. From the most mundane aspects of life to some disturbing images of colonial brutality. The European powers went home long ago, but the stereotypes in those images continue to shape perceptions of Africa today. The Listening Post's Tarek Nafa now on the legacy of postcards from days gone by. It's very easy for us now to think of a postcard as a kind of happy snap from holidays, right? The sort of wish you were here to family and friends. But they were in their own day a new media craze. They were produced specifically to construct uh, a particular image of Africa and Africans. The scramble for Africa, you know, occurred 1884-ish, where European powers basically carved up different uh, parts of Africa to colonize. Part of that process was to somehow justify colonization, why uh, one nation would take over another nation. They sent missionaries, they sent politicians, and they sent photographers. The people with the cameras um, get to dictate how we see, who we think we're seeing, what we think we're seeing. And so I think that's part of what makes those images so dangerous. They are images that show Europe's civilizing mission as the men behind it wanted it to be seen. The monuments of empire, courthouses, churches, ports, and train stations. And the locals, those in need of civilizing. Photography was a major component of European colonialism. And the late 19th and early 20th century was the golden age of postcards an early form of mass media. The images taken by an assortment of commercial photographers, missionaries, ethnographers, and colonial administrators were printed and posted back home billions of times, shaping Europe's view of Africa and the Orient. They come under three very loose themes. The kind of highly uh, sexualized, eroticized um, woman, you know, Arab woman or African woman, you know, bare chested, often posed in a suggestive way. The other theme would be uh, Africans as servers, you know, always in a kind of domesticated state, servants to colonial administrators or missionaries or military personnel. And then the third, the African as savage, you know, African warriors as savage, as uncivilized, um, not to be trusted. This is Nigeria, and it's titled Igbo Hunters with uh, flintlock guns. Um, and this was a very common type, showing sort of the barbarity or the savagery of, of Africans, and particularly as hunters. And so this particular image is basically just showing them in their everyday clothing. And you can see that it's actually been staged to some extent because you have two individuals on either side who are kneeling and sort of looking directly at the camera. So there's a, an understanding of cooperation and collaboration in creating this image. Photographers carefully selected both their subjects and their surroundings. For those in the business of selling postcards, there was a commercial interest in making images that tantalized or in some way fed into a pre-existing bias. You can see that clearly in images from France's colonial encounter with North Africa. Faced with women who did not conform with their exotic fantasy, photographers simply made up photos that did. They had this mythology of Algerians as kind of over-sexualized. Um, they had the image of the harem in their mind. But when they arrived, the Algerians looked nothing like the French had imagined them. Many of the women were veiled or um, covered, and so they were inaccessible to the photographer's gaze. 
they ended up hiring people to act as models. They set up studios, they asked the women to pose in the way that the colonizers had imagined those people. Then they produced postcards and sent them back to France to say this is what these people are like and they need our help. This was a very much a commercially driven business and it was photographers, people running photographic studios that were looking for cards that, that they could sell. They could sell cheaply. And all these postcard producers and photographers were copying each other. They were ruthless in stealing other people's ideas and images. So this is the way in which these genres kind of reproduce themselves over time. The lands of those depicted in the postcards have long since won their independence but the cultural impact, the stain of the imagery, lives on. You can trace the link between depictions of black and brown bodies today and the often degrading and orientalist depictions of the colonial period. Then, like now, the bodies of those deemed in some way foreign are more likely to show up in the media starving, destitute, naked or dead. The only bodies that we see in the media are usually brown and black bodies from other countries. That ends up producing an, a vision of the world where violence is something that happens elsewhere to nameless victims. I used to think that something about being an American was the reason that we didn't see Americans' bodies in the media, um, but then I saw Michael Brown's body on the front page of the New York Times, and he's an American. So it seems to me that there's something different operating that should force us to ask questions about whose bodies are made visible, whose bodies are hidden and why, and what work those images do. The uh, continuing visions um, or images of kind of black death and trauma has definitely continued um, from the past. Those images are enduring. If you have no association with the person as a human being, when that humanity is removed, it's easier to think about that person as, as, as an object, almost as a, like a scientific, you know, object. Uh, there is no agency, there is no humanity. There are layers to these postcards. They tell us a lot about the colonial mindset. And in a time before photos appeared in newspapers, they also served as a form of photojournalism. But too many of these images stripped the subjects of their humanity. They are the visual expression of a racial hierarchy. Today, pictures like these force us to confront how those who thought themselves superior constructed an image of those deemed the other. Re-examining and critiquing these postcards really helps us understand the nuances of history. The postcards themselves moved through so many different facets of life at the time, whether it's the post office or through colonial offices, right, through the hands of, you know, everyday citizens. These were artifacts that really made it into every niche of life. And so we really should understand them as artifacts of our histories, tangible objects that have come through history with us. People have talked a lot about how Photoshop or video manipulation has introduced the possibility that images can be doctored or falsified, but what these colonial photographs show is that they've always been doctored and falsified. They've always been put to political use. And it's our job to become viewers who are more critical and better able to see what they actually show, which is the violence of the colonial vision to become viewers capable of looking past the margins and uh, rescuing the information that, that is there that we are trained not to look at. And finally, last week we...